And Bob will still be excited and happy because he gets the great job of keeping everybody awake, awake for the next half hour. So he's going to do knowledge and wisdom from Mr. Know It All's corner. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you Paul Winkle. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. I'm blessed to be here. And it's been a few years since I've been with most of you. And you've grown, you guys have grown up, married. Look at you guys. It's I think 2008 is I think when I was last in this spot. So we're going to start in First Timothy, please, chapter two. We're going to uh, cover wisdom and knowledge, and not thoroughly, but uh, as best I can in the allotted time. I was very blessed that Jim asked me to teach. And I was desperate. In uh, yeah, <laughs> desperation does funny things. I, uh, <laughs> I was very excited, and I put together a wonderful three-hour teaching. <laughs> However, we're going to forego the three-hour tour, and uh, I'll uh, forego all of the Greek words and definitions, and I'll do my best to let just let the words speak without all of my interruptions. First Timothy 2, please, chapter 1, and as, as covering this, we want to look at God's word when it's rightly understood. It gives us knowledge of God. It gives us knowledge of the things of God. It gives us knowledge of God's Son. And it gives us knowledge of us when it's rightly understood. And in 1 Timothy 2, I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. For kings, for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved. Now, he could have stopped at that. Isn't salvation good enough? Isn't it great to know? Because you know. But God went on to say, and to come unto the knowledge, the acknowledgement of the truth. And this is the truth. All right, go to 2 Timothy 2, obviously. If you receive knowledge and you understand it, then you have both knowledge and understanding. And that's why it's so important to rightly understand the Scriptures. And that's why we put the time and the effort into studying God's Word. All right? But 2 Timothy 2.15, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of Truth. Ephesians 5, please. Ephesians 5. And keep in mind that knowledge does you no good unless you apply it. I'm not going in order. I'm not doing knowledge first, then wisdom. We're just kind of getting it together here. But it does you no good unless you apply it. Thus, that's the wisdom coming in there. In Ephesians 5, verse 15, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools. But as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Uh, you can go to Second Chronicles, please. God does not want us to be foolish or uninformed or stupid. God does not want us to be ignorant. And he makes a point of telling us that. At least nine, nine times in the church epistles, God tells us that. Romans 1, I would not have you ignorant. Romans 10, they being ignorant of God's righteousness. Romans 11, I would not rather that you should be ignorant. 1 Corinthians 10, I would not that you should be ignorant. 1 Corinthians 12, concerning spiritual matters, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. And on and on. 2 Corinthians 2, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not Ignorant of his devices. Second Chronicles one is where we're gonna we're gonna start at a starting point here, because if God doesn't want us to be ignorant, then He's gonna have to show us. He's gonna have to teach us. He's gonna have to give us the knowledge and the wisdom that we need. And in Second Chronicles one, give me now wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people. Who can judge this, thy people? That is so great. This is Solomon. Oh, I'm sorry. 10, verse 10 and 12. Thank you. 
Second Corinthians, no, Second Chronicles. Did I say Corinthians? No, 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 Second Chronicles. No, 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 no. Chronicles 1, 10, and 12. Oh, sorry. And uh, Solomon's asking God for wisdom. Give me now wisdom and knowledge. And look at verse 12. Wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee. Go to Second or excuse me, First Kings 4. First Kings 4, God will reiterate this. Verse 29. First Kings 4, verse 29. And God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding, exceeding much and largeness of heart, even as the sand that is on the seashore. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 2. <laughs> Please, God bless you. Proverbs 2. People often talk of the wisdom of Solomon. But you know what? It's the reverence of God that's the beginning point for us. The reverence of for the acknowledgement of God. That's where you start. Then God gives you wisdom and knowledge. And it's just so important. You can't reverence God without reverencing his word. Okay? That's how we're going to get to know that. And, and such a beautiful job this morning on prayer. And, and just the things that we have for our relationship, building it with God. And what a wonderful thing that we can do with prayer and getting to know Father and then asking for the wisdom and the knowledge. But you get the knowledge, the respect from this word. Proverbs 2, for the Lord. And you can see how wisdom and knowledge and understanding, how they're intertwined. And they're just a lot of times in the same verses. Proverbs 2, verse 6, for the Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. Keep your finger here and then go to Psalm 111, please. Psalm 111. It's just such a blessing to see some of this stuff. I, I, I got so blessed putting some of this stuff together, and it was very confronting, you know, and I literally did. I had a stack of papers that I was going to put together, and... You, you have 30 minutes to do a teaching on both of these. And uh, it's just, it's very, it's humbling because you can ask God, Father, help me, help me put this teaching together. And you put something together like that, and then it's like, well, I remember from a class that we took at one time, if you're not listening to God, you'll hear from heaven another way. And somebody help me uh, understand, yeah, you get a half hour, that's it. I digress here. Psalm 111, verse 10, the fear, the reverence of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And a good understanding have all day to do his commandments. His praise endureth forever. Go back to uh, Proverbs, please. Proverbs 1. The fear, the reverence of the Lord, verse 7, is the beginning of knowledge. The fools despise wisdom and instruction. Chapter 9. Chapter 9, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Uh, we're going to go all the way to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. We'll get there in a second. If you get an opportunity to read, when you, next time you read Psalm 119, look at all of the wonderful things that God says about his word. And what a blessing in every verse and all of the things that God says about his word. And that's where we get our starting points, the reverence of his word. Mm -hmm. God wants his people informed, and so much so that when you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, Romans 10, 9, and 10, you are born again. You get that gift of Holy Spirit. And with that gift of Holy Spirit, God gave us Two of the manifestations, word of knowledge and word of wisdom. I mean, how awesome is that? God wants his people informed. Um, and so that's that's something that you can keep in mind in light of God warning us to know. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, let me get there real quick. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, we're going to look at another type of wisdom. Because... 
we know there's all kinds of stuff in this world where we can look at. There's different types of wisdom, and this is a different type of wisdom here. Verse 19 of chapter 3, for the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. It's of no profit. It's fake. It's wisdom of the world. It's not godly wisdom. Look at 2 Corinthians 1. 2 Corinthians 1, verse 12. And I'll, uh, I want to read this in the, the working translation. Verse 12 of 2 Corinthians, verse 1, chapter 1, excuse me, verse 12. In fact, our boasting is this, the witness of our conscience, that we behaved ourselves in the world and to an even greater extent toward you with integrity or sanctification. The genuineness of God, not with fleshly wisdom, but with the grace of God. You have that knowledge of the word. Use wisdom in how you approach people. And, and it's like Tommy shared, being happy. Go to Matthew 13. What are you doing with the wisdom and the knowledge that you have? Matthew 13. I'm going to look at an example here. Verse 54. And Jesus Christ, when he was coming to his own country, he taught them in their synagogue in so much that they were astonished and said, Whence hath this man this wisdom and these mighty works? He used wisdom and he did mighty works. Romans 11, please. Romans chapter 11. <clears throat> Verse 33, oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. Colossians chapter 3. Yeah, we'll get a few verses. Colossians chapter 3. It's great to have an extensive knowledge of the word. But what are you doing with that knowledge? What are you doing with the knowledge of God's word that you have? Colossians 3, verse 16, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another. Teaching one another. In psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, sing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever you do in word or do, deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Chapter 4, please. Verse 5, walk in wisdom toward them that are without. It's like, how do you approach the heathen, the people who don't know about God, the people who have a desire? Somebody could be sitting there praying. How do you handle them? How do you approach them? Great to have a wonderful knowledge of the word, but use wisdom, teaching. Um, go to James chapter 3, please. James will show us another, another avenue here. We need to steward. We need to care for what we have. And this is probably slightly off topic, but some of us know that you can lose things. And that's why it's great to have great wisdom. And with that wisdom, you steward and you care for what you have. Care for yourself. Steward, care for your family. We're going to James chapter 3. And we're going to start in verse 13. We need to help one another. And that's why it was such a blessing with Tommy your house and how you have people in there living and we've done we've done that you've cared for people you've brought people in you need to help one another be productive be wise and use wisdom i'm going to start in 13 chapter 3. who is a wise man and a dude with knowledge among you let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness and wisdom but if ye have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom 
descendeth not from above, but it's earthly. It's sensual. It's devilish. It's what God calls it. And you know people who claim to be so wise. Yeah, well, they have all the statistics. I was never one who had statistics. I mean, I've, I've been around sports fans that they could tell you all kinds of stats. I never could. I couldn't retain all that stuff. But there are people who are wise with worldly wisdom. God calls some of this earthly, sensual, and devilish. But where envy and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. But the wisdom that's from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle. It's easy to be entreated. It's full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. The fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. So verse 3, or excuse me, verse 13, who is a wise man? Be a wise man, not a wise guy. All right? First Corinthians 13. First Corinthians 13. You know, and a lot of these verses are familiar to us. I mean, we know them, we've studied them, we've taught them. Just in the context of having knowledge, having wisdom, dealing with people, dealing with ourselves with your fellowship, with your community. Take care of one another. See, knowledge is, you can get knowledge, there's worldly knowledge, there's spiritual knowledge, the word of knowledge. What are you doing with that knowledge that you have with the word especially? 1 Corinthians 13, it's great to have knowledge, but 1 Corinthians, look at verse 1. <clears throat> Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not the love of God, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, though I have all believing so that I can remove mountains and have not the love of God, I am not. Though I bestow my goods, and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not the love of God, it profit me nothing. The love of God suffereth long and is kind, and the love of God envieth not the love of God, borneth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. That's a hard one to read, <laughs> especially it just is. Rejoices, verse 6, not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. The love of God never fails. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. 1 Corinthians 8. Chapter 8, verse 1, Now as touching things offered unto idols, we know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffs up. But the love of God builds up. The love of God, it never, never fails. Look at Ephesians chapter 1. You know, you know people who, well, me. I've been in the Word for a long time. Great. I've taken all these classes. Wonderful. You know what? I've been through a couple programs. Cool. I have I have titles. I have degrees. Great. You know, it's great to have knowledge, but what do you do with the knowledge that you have? Do you seek out those who Desire, hunger, and thirst after righteousness? Do you help a brother or a sister who's in need? An event like this is happening. Do you seek out, God bless you. Do you seek out, how can I help? I mean, there was a, I bet half you guys don't know what streaming chairs is. <laughs> we, we, I mean, you just, you seek. That's, that's, that's using some wisdom. And that comes with heart. It comes with the love of God. I'm, I'm sidetracked. I'm going to run out of time. 
Uh, Ephesians 1, chapter 1, verse 15. Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your believing in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Go back to Proverbs, please. Chapter 2, Proverbs 2. Proverbs 2, verse 1. My son. Now, I don't, and I know it's 2021. Tiffany, I don't have to say that when it says my son, it's excluding you. Do, do I have to say that? <laughs> my son, people. <laughs> oh, where we have gone. My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply your heart to understanding. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge and liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver, and searches for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the reverence, the fear of the Lord, and find the knowledge of God. For, and look, they're all here in the one verse, for the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. Proverbs 19. Proverbs 19. Verse 27, and I always thought that this was this would be a great name for a kid. If I had a, if I had a son, I'd name him this. Cease, my son. I just think that's a great name for a kid. Cease. Cease, my son, to hear the instruction. The instruction that causes to err from the words of knowledge. So is there instruction in the world? That can cause you to err from knowledge, from the truth, from what God says is right? Yes. There's fake learning. There's fake instruction. There's fake information. There's things that no profit. Yeah. Hosea. Well, no, you know what? Go to Mark chapter 12. I'll read Hosea. Go to Mark chapter 12 in a very foundational verse. You all know it. Hosea 4, 6. God says that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Mark chapter 12 is where we're going to go. Mark chapter 12. Verse 28, where we'll start. You know, it's, it's great to have a wonderful knowledge of the word, but, and here's where wisdom comes in. You know, you want to, speak the word to somebody and I know that when people spoke the word to me when I was oh goodness, in my teens back in the 70s it's a long time ago you know there's there's you have to use a knowledge and there's a, a verse that would not have worked for me if they would have shared it, it just wouldn't have worked and that would have been Job 21 it says verse 22 shall any teach God knowledge seeing he judges them that are high it says that that wouldn't have worked for me. <laughs> use some wisdom with the word all right so mark chapter 12 it says verse 28 and one of the scribes came and having heard them reasoning together and perceiving that he had answered them well asked him well which is the first commandment of all and jesus answered him a little wisdom here jesus answered him the first of all the commandments is hear o israel the Lord our God is how many? One. one. The Lord our God is one Lord. Man, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all the heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. And the scribe said unto him, well, master, thou hast said the truth, for there is one God. There's none other but he, and to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding. 
It's what I want to just briefly touch on right now. Understanding. With all the understanding, with all the soul, and with all the strength. And to love his neighbor as himself is more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered him discreetly, he said, dude, you're not far from the kingdom of God. Go to Luke chapter 24, please. Oh. Understanding is a great thing. You know, when you study, ask God to show you. Ask God to teach you. Ask him. He's faithful. He'll show you. Wisdom is, is that productive thought, but understanding, I mean, you can hear something, somebody teaches and it's in there and you're thinking about it, and somebody else will come along and teach something, boom, there's understanding. Yeah, there's a great Greek word that goes along with that, but I promised myself I wouldn't get into all the Greek words. Verse, <laughs> verse 44 in Luke 24, and he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you. That all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. <laughs> then opened he their understanding, that they might understand the scriptures. You ever think that when you're reading God's word, oh, yeah. when you're studying, I just want to understand this. Or somebody comes along and they teach something. Ah, oh, it's just it's just great. Um Jim taught a great teaching here a couple weeks ago. God wants his people informed. And it was like, just thanks for teaching my teaching. It was like, you just <laughs> hear something and it clicks something in you. It's just, it's Father teaching you. Pay attention. Uh, Ephesians 3. You can go to 2 Timothy 2. I'll read Ephesians 3. Whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge. The mystery of Christ. And in 2 Timothy chapter 2, 2 Timothy 2, verse 7, consider what I say. The Lord give thee understanding. It's great topics, man. I'm telling you. Wisdom and understanding. Huge. So you can take it and study it yourselves a little bit. Go to Colossians chapter 1. We're almost done. That's what the clock says. Colossians chapter 1. It won't go well. <laughs> Verse 9. For this cause, now we're just going to get into a little bit of deeper knowledge. For this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge. And here they are. You're all three in this verse. And that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. We're going to close in 2 Peter, please. This, 2 Peter chapter 1, it's a section of scripture that was always dear to my heart. I studied some of it. I even taught some of it. And it was just always a favorite of mine until I heard somebody teach it. And some of you in this room might remember a teaching like that. But I heard this section of scripture taught, and it just, it came alive for me. With. And so we're going to read Second Peter chapter 1, verses 1 to 10. Simon Peter, a servant now. Keep in mind, also, this is the end of Peter's life. This is Peter, who the Apostle Paul confronted him to the face, called him on the carpet. But now look at his heart here. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious believing with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of our Lord and of Jesus our Lord. Remember we started talking about having a knowledge of God's word, a reverence of God's word, an understanding of God's word. And how we learn 
the thing, a knowledge of the things of God, a knowledge of God's will, knowledge of God's heart, knowledge of his son, Jesus Christ, and a knowledge of us, what God's word says about us. First, three, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. It's a great Greek word there, too. Through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory, virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, giving all diligence, a little bit of work there, right? Yeah. Giving all diligence, add to your believing virtue, and to virtue, knowledge. And to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, the love of God. For if these things be in you, and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Verse 10, wherefore the rather, brethren, to give diligence. Ooh, a little bit more effort there. To make your calling and election sure, for if you do these things, ye shall never fall. And we'll close in chapter 3, the last part. Actually, actually we're going to start in uh, verse 15. An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. Even as our beloved brother Paul, one who confronted him to the face. Isn't that just beautiful? Also, according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things. He's directing them to the church epistles, which are directly direct addressed to us in whom are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable wrestle, as they do also the other scriptures, unto their own destruction. And then verses 17 and 18, I just want to read from the working translation, because it's just, it's just tremendous. You therefore, beloved, since you have foreknown these things, watch so that you are not led astray, and this is, this is fantastic. By the delusion of the lawless ones and fall from your own steadfastness. Instead, grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and unto the day of the age. Amen. So thank you for letting me share. God bless you.